Petrol. What is petrol? Petrol is a carbon chain. Okay, I'm only going to draw four. There's actually various different lengths of carbon chains, uh, starting at five and going up to about eight. And you have different ratios in different countries and different octane contents and all this kind of stuff. But it basically looks like this. Okay, diesel's the same, it's just a bit longer. Crude oil's the same, it's even massively longer. Okay, that is what you have as a carbon chain. When you burn this in a normal engine, you're breaking it down and you're combining it with oxygen. So you only really have carbons and hydrogens. There's a little bit of sulfur. There's the odd sulfur molecule in there and the odd little bits of cleaning product and stuff, but essentially this is what you have. So if you take a carbon and you join it to oxygens, you have carbon dioxide. Okay, it makes two bonds. And if you take the hydrogens off, and you combine them with oxygen, you get water. Right? H2O. Okay. So if you burn petrol properly and completely, you should produce CO2 and water. An engine doesn't actually burn 100% all the way there. It burns most of it, and it leaves some behind. So instead of having let me find my clock so I can wipe this off. Instead of having just CO2 and water, you get some carbons that are forming carbon monoxide. You get some carbons that are forming carbon dioxide. And you get a bit like this bit here where it splits. Focus. Okay. And you end up with something shorter than your original chain, and that is your hydrocarbon reading. Okay. So on the gas analyzers, you get a hydrocarbon count. Okay, put the camera back in focus. So you get some kind of hydrocarbon count. Now, that sensor could read one piece of carbon, two pieces of carbon, three, four, what, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't really care what it is, it's gonna read some, so you get some hydrocarbons. Now, you burn more or less, so you get sort of like three to 5% carbon uh, monoxide, you get sort of like 12 to 14% carbon dioxide and you get on a generator like this you get two to three hundred parts per million random bits of hydrocarbon chain okay when you make a vaporizing carburetor your vaporizing carburetor does part of the job for you it takes your long chain and it cuts it up into little pieces so then instead of seeing a big chain, you get little pieces in there. So you end up with lots and lots and lots of CO2 because it's gone all the way through to there. You end up with a little bit or zero CO and you get very little hydrocarbons. So last night we ran this one and we got uh, 10 to 12% CO2, 0, 0.0 something percent carbon monoxide and anywhere between 20 and down to about five parts per million unreacted unburnt hydrocarbon chain that's a vaporizing carburetor okay there's no way that you can burn a carbon molecule or atom and not make carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide it's not possible okay this is what most people are getting when they're building the heat system they're building a vaporizing carburetor when you've got a geek system instead of having carbon you've only got hydrogens we take the carbon atom we take it apart and carbon has an atomic mass of 12. so you have one carbon with an atomic mass of 12 and you end up with 12 hydrogens okay it doesn't just make hydrogen it makes other things like hydrogen and synthetic gases but you basically get the same atomic mass on the other side of the reactor. So then when this comes out, it doesn't produce carbon dioxide. There's a secondary reaction that, as far as I can see, happens in the engine, where somehow this excess hydrogen is converted back into oxygen. Oh, we forgot to talk about oxygen in the vaporizing carburetor, didn't we? Oxygen. Okay, this is the really important bit. Air goes in at 20% oxygen. 
carbon goes in at whatever parts per million you've got with whatever fuel you have here. And what comes out the other end is CO2 or CO, depending on your ratios, and your oxygen content should be between 0% and up to about 3%. If you've got anything more than 3%, it's super, super lean, right? There's too much air. When you've got too much air and you've got very, very, very high uh, oxygen contents, your engine gets really, 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 really hot. We'll talk about that in another video. We'll talk about pre-ignition and pinking in something else, okay? But you get no oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide ratios, and some amount of unburnt fuel.